Welcome back to another episode of The Spark. We will be reading from different web pages covering the white buffalo. As usual, all of the uh, links will be noted in the show notes. I had to say that because of legal reasons. So we're going to start off with uh, legendsofamerica.com. This is the Native American legend of the white buffalo. The white buffalo are sacred to many Native Americans. The Lakota Sioux Nation has passed down the legend of the white buffalo, a story now approximately 2,000 years old at many council meetings, sacred ceremonies, and through tribal storytellers. There are several variations, but all are meaningful and all tell the same outcome. Have communication with the creator through prayer with clear intent for peace, harmony, and balance for a living a life in the earth mother. Spirituality among Native Americans and non-Native Americans has been a strong force for those who believe in the power of the great spirit or God. It matters not what you call the creator. What matters is that you pray to give thanks for your blessings and trust the guidance given to you from the world of spirit. Many truths about spirit are told and handed down from one generation to the next. The legend of the white buffalo calf woman tells how the people had lost the ability to communicate with the creator. The creator sent the sacred white buffalo calf woman to teach the people how to pray with the pipe. With that pipe, seven sacred ceremonies were given for the people to abide in order to ensure a future of harmony, peace, and balance. Legend says that long ago, two young men who were hunting when from out of nowhere came a beautiful maiden dressed in the white buckskin. One of the hunters looked upon her and recognized her as awakened or sacred being, lowered his eyes. The second hunter approached her with lust in his eyes, desiring her for his woman. White buffalo calf woman beckoned the lustful warrior to her, and as he approached, a cloud of dust arose around them, causing them to be hidden from view. When the dust settled, nothing but a pile of bones lay next to her. As she walked toward the respectful young hunter, she explained to him that she had merely fulfilled the other man's desire, allowing him to, within a brief moment, to live a lifetime, die and decay. The white buffalo calf woman instructed the young man to go back to the people and tell them to prepare for her arrival to teach them the way of the prayer. The young hunter obeyed. When the white buffalo calf woman arrived with a sacred bundle, the prayer pipe, she taught the people of the seven sacred ways of pray, or to pray. The prayers are through ceremonies that include a sweat lodge for purification, the naming ceremony for child naming, the healing ceremony to restore health to the body, mind, and spirit, the adoption ceremony for making of relatives, the marriage ceremony for uniting man and woman, or male and female, the vision quest for communicating with the Creator for direction and answer to one's life, and the Sundance ceremony to pray for the well-being of the people. When the teaching of the sacred ways was complete, the white buffalo calf woman told the people she would again return for the sacred bundle that she left with them. Before leaving, she told them within her were the four ages, and she would look back upon the people in each age, returning to the end of the fourth age, to restore harmony and spirituality to the troubled land. She walked a short distance. She looked back towards the people and sat down. When she arose, they were amazed to see she had become a black buffalo. Walking a little further, the buffalo laid down, this time arising as a yellow buffalo. The third time, the buffalo walked a little further and this time arose as a red buffalo. Walking a little further, it rolled on the ground and rose one last time as the white buffalo calf signaling the fulfillment of the white buffalo calf prophecy. The changing of the four colors of the white buffalo calf woman represents the four colors of man, white, yellow, red, and black. These colors represent the four directions, north, east, south, and west. The sacred bundle that was left to the Lakota people is still with the people in the sacred place of the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation in South Dakota. It is kept by a man known as the keeper of the white buffalo calf pipe, Arvro Looking Horse. The legend of the white buffalo calf woman remains ever promising in this age of spiritual enlightenment and conscious awareness. In today's world of confusion and war, many of us are looking for signs of peace. With the return of the white buffalo, it is a sign that prayers are being heard, that the sacred pipe is being honored, and that the promises of prophecy are being fulfilled. White buffalo signals a time of abundance and plenty. Though harsh as the world we live in may be throughout recorded history, there have been spiritual leaders teaching peace, hope, and balance amongst all life. This was taught by the great teachers such as Jesus, Buddha, the Dalai Lamas, and Native American leaders. Chief Crazy Horse, Chief Seattle, and Chief Red Cloud are a few of the visionary leaders who committed their lives to bring peace and internal happiness to all who they touched. They were 
tangible signs of goodwill toward all men, women, and children. All right, now we're going to go over to nativetimes.com, and this is uh, Ruth Hopkins, Prophecy of the White Buffalo. Now, I'm going to state as a caveat to this that there is a proper name that is given to the um, people of the seven council fires. They're known as Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, or the Sioux. I'm going to attempt to pronounce the proper name for it. However, I'm sure I'm going to butcher it. So please bear with me and forgive me my transgressions. The prophecy of the white buffalo is proof that the American Indians were the first American naturalists. The white buffalo calf holds special significance to the American Indians, especially the Oseti Sakawan people, as it is a crucial part of the teachings and prophecy of the white buffalo calf woman. The white buffalo calf is considered a sacred omen of change. Now, we had covered this in the previous article, so just for sake of repetition, because repetition is the mother of retention, we're going to hit the finer points in this, so I figured we'd just cover it as well. According to legend, the white buffalo calf woman was a holy entity that was visited the o Oseti Oseti Sakawan over a four day period. She taught them sacred ceremonies, songs, and dances. She gifted the people with a sacred bundle containing the white buffalo calf pipe, which still exists to this day and is kept by Chief Arvol Looking Horse of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Upon appearing and leaving, the white buffalo calf woman changed into a white buffalo calf, then changed in color from white to black to yellow and finally red. Prophetically, it is said that the white buffalo calf woman will return to the end of an age and she will appear as the white buffalo calf. A buffalo is normally brown in color, so historically the birth of the white buffalo calf is rare. The earliest recorded sighting of the white buffalo calf in the U.S. is in 1833. Since the 1990s, white buffalo calf births have been much more common. There have been some 20 or so documented cases of white buffalo calves over the past few decades. According to modern science, there are several different reasons as to why a buffalo could be born white. The most obvious reason given is that they may be an albino. Albinism is a genetic condition in which the organism doesn't produce melanin, meaning that it is a partial or complete lack of brown pigment. If the animal is an albino, it will have white fur, pink eyes, and increased sensitivity to the sun and poor eyesight. Another reason could be that the animal is leukistic meaning that they were born with a genetic condition characterized by reduced pigmentation. Such a condition is marked by a reduction of all types of pigment, not just melanin. As a result, the animal will have white fur and blue eyes. Another recessive genetic condition causes buffalo to be born white, but to become brown within a year or two as it grows older. Also, the buffalo could be a fertile hybrid offspring of domestic cattle and buffalo. In this case, it is possible for an animal to look like a buffalo and possess white or other coloration from the cattle ancestry. Hold your horses, folks. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that I've taken something sacred and beautiful and explained it away with rational Western science. You'd be wrong in that assumption. I've come to the conclusion that the science behind the causes of the white calf phenomena and the prophecy of the white buffalo calf woman may not be mutually exclusive. Once plentiful in the northern plains, the buffalo were nearly, nearly went extinct as a species in the late 1800s. The population crash was due to overhunting by non-Indians. Buffalo were slaughtered by the thousands. While buffalo have survived, the catastrophe of near extinction is not without its consequences. When organisms like the buffalo suffer a huge die-off and must repopulate from a small pool of surviving individuals, a population bottleneck is created. The population bottlenecks reduce the genetic variation because it changes the frequency of gene variants, called alleles. Here we are discussing the dominant allele, gene variant, for the fur color in buffalo, which is brown. Alleles in the offspring are a sample of those in the parents. In other words, the only genes available to the given organisms are the ones found within its parents. If there are less available parents, there are less genes in the proverbial gene pool. The effect of genetic drift is larger in small populations and smaller in large populations. As a result, recessive genetic conditions that are rare in large populations become more pronounced after population bottleneck, which is created when organisms must repopulate based on a small population of reproducing individuals. The Oseti Sakawan and a number of other American Indian tribes are historically tied to the buffalo. As hunter-gatherer indigenous people of the northern plains followed buffalo herds and hunted them. Every part of the buffalo was used. The survival of the tribes was dependent upon the buffalo. In other words, according to the cultural benefits of the Oseti Sakawan, 
and other tribes who hunted the buffalo for sustenance. The fates of the buffalo and the native people who hunted them were intertwined. Extinction of the buffalo thousands or even hundreds of years ago would have meant that the people who hunted them would have to change and adapt to survive and suffer extinction themselves. American Indians were not only the first inhabitants of this country, but the first natural scientists in America. They used native plants medicinally, studied the night sky, and knew the natural laws of Earth through observation. Nature was their teacher. It is possible that native people were able to understand the occurrence of recessive genetic conditions among animals that were going extinct. If so, they would be able to make a direct correlation between the appearance of these conditions in buffalo and the end of an age of their people. Thus, warning of a change in fur coloration among the buffalo would directly translate to an omen of change among American Indians. For this one, we're going to go over to Wikipedia and we're going to look up some of the white buffalo throughout the ages. Just going to read off randomly a list of some of the, the uh, ones that have born, been born and died. The first one is in 1833, a white bison was killed by the Cheyenne. The Cheyenne killed this white bison during the Leonid meteor shower and the night stars fell and scribed a peace and trade treaty on its skin. This event was documented by historian Josiah Gregg and other travelers on the Santa Fe Trail. We're going to go to a, an interesting animal because it lived so long. It lived from 1933 to 1959, which is a relatively old age considering. Bison's name was Big Medicine. He was born in the wild at the National Bison Range on Montana's Flathead Indian Reservation. The name Big Medicine was chosen due to the sacred power attributed to the white bison. Following its death in 1959, its body was preserved and is now on display at the Montana Historical Society in Helena. So if you're in the in the area, in Montana, in Helena, Montana, you can go and visit Big Medicine. We're going to go over to Spirit Mountain Ranch, donated the herd of white buffalo to Sacred World Peace Church and Alliance, and was successfully bred five generations of white buffalo starting from a single white female, almost all with brown fathers. Uh, their herd includes 15 white buffalo as of June 16th, 2012. And their names were Miracle Moon, Rainbow Spirit, Mandela Peace Pilgrim, Arizona Spirit, Sunrise Spirit, Thunder Spirit, and Chief Hiawatha. A female white buffalo calf was born in Shelbyville, Kentucky on June 3rd, 2005 at Buffalo Crossing, a buffalo ranch and tourist facility. She was named Canty Pijut, uh, Medicine Heart in the Lakota language. I'm sure I butchered that. I apologize. In a traditional ceremony led by Steve McAuliffe, a Lakota Shawnee from Indiana. Yeah, on May 21st, 2008, a third white calf was born of normal brown two-year-old at the National Buffalo Museum in Jamestown, North Dakota. And the last one I'm going to cover is important to me because it happens here in Connecticut. And it's on June 16th, 2012, a white buffalo male calf was born at Peter Fay's Dairy Farm in Goshen, Connecticut, which is about, I think it's 35-minute drive from here. Uh, the calf was temporarily called Tatanka Ska, White Buffalo in Lakota. Four elders from the Aglawa Sioux tribe, along with Fay and members of Lakota, Seneca, Mohawk, and uh, Cayuga tribes, performed a naming ceremony on July 28th at the farm. The calf was named Yellow Medicine Dancing Boy, and uh, the farmer plans to care for the buffalo rather than sell it for its meat. And that was uh, here in Connecticut, so homegrown hip hip hooray. Okay, this article comes from thewatchers.edorelli.com. Sacred white buffalo killed. Lightning medicine cloud, a white buffalo, was born onto R.B. Little Soldier's Lakota Ranch with great ceremony. Now at just under one year old, the sacred and rare calf is dead. Authority believe the animal and his mother were intentionally killed. Lightning medicine cloud's father had been killed by a lightning strike last month. A one-year-old birthday party was planned for lightning medicine cloud for next week. The event will continue as a memorial. The Hunt County Sheriff and Texas Rangers are searching for the persons or people 
who killed the two animals. We are investigating all three deaths at the Lakota Ranch here, said Hunt County Sheriff Randy Meeks. As legend goes, chances are one in ten million that a white buffalo will enter will ever enter this world. The white buffalo was born on May 12th last year during the intense power of a driving thunderstorm. The white buffalo was born on Arby Little Soldier's Ranch in Hunt County. Little Soldier is part of Mandan Indian, part Lakota. He says he is also great-grandson of Sitting Bull. While all the other buffaloes on Little Soldier's Ranch belong to him, he said that the white one belongs to all people and nations. He believes and custom dictates that the animal's existence is a powerful message, but its meaning is not yet known. A rare white buffalo calf regarded as sacred by Lakota Sioux tradition has officially been named at a ceremony drawing about 2,000 people to a northeast Texas ranch. The name Lightning Medicine Cloud is also a tribute to the first known white buffalo in Texas, born in 1933. Lakota Sioux tradition holds that Opa, the goddess of peace, once appeared in the form of a white buffalo calf. Little Soldier says the buffalo represents hope, for all nations and races. The message that was brought here to this ranch, he brought strong and it will carry on. It's not going to quit. I've never, I'm, it's never going to quit, Arby Little Soldier said. White buffalo are extremely rare. To be considered sacred, they must also have certain markings, black nose, black eyes, black tip tail. Lightning Medicine Cloud was the third with all markings. The fourth in Lakota Native American prophecy represents the end of the last days. Okay, now this art, this uh, last article comes from NPR.org, and it's uh, Texas Sheriff. Sacred white buffalo was not slaughtered. The mystery surrounding the death of a rare white buffalo and the claim by some Lakota Sioux in Texas that it had been killed by other Native Americans deepened Tuesday. A local sheriff announced that investigators believe the animal died of a bacterial disease and said the case is now closed. We first posted about the death of lightning medicine cloud in May. A white bison, the more accurate word to use, is considered sacred by many Native Americans. Arby Little Soldier, the owner-operator of Lakota Ranch where lightning medicine cloud was being raised, had said the animal was found slaughtered and skinned on April 30th. He later went on to claim he had evidence that the animal was killed by members of another Native American tribe. But as our colleagues at KETR report, Hunt County Sheriff Randy Meeks said Tuesday that it is our belief that Lightning Medicine Cloud and Buffalo Woman, the mother, died of natural causes. Information obtained during the investigation indicated many of the signs and symptoms exhibited by a buffalo are similar to a bacterial disease that we know as blackleg. According to the station, the sheriff also said authorities have photographs indicating lightning was not skinned. The photographs depicted skin and hair on the remains, Meek said. The veterinarians advised that was a lot of skin that was still left on the remains. KETR adds that, according to Meeks, the sheriff's office responded to Lakota Ranch concerning the deaths on May 3rd. He told reporters that Lightning Medicine Cloud was deceased for at least six days and buried for three days prior to their notification. Meeks said that the case is now closed. Should further evidence surface in the future that would indicate that the deaths were not natural, we will gladly reopen the case, he said. The Fort Worth Star Telegraph's Crime Time blog adds, the Little Soldier could not be reached for comment Tuesday. The Little Soldier family has previously posted facts for all viewers, supporters, friends, mourners, and interested persons. That web page includes this statement. There was not an insurance policy on Lightning Medicine Cloud. Okay, so that was this episode of The Spark. What we tried to attain here was to cover the myth or legend of the white buffalo and what it means to the tribes that followed it. And there's a lot of markers and cues that were laid out by reading the legend. And I think the important thing to take away from this episode would be that the information that was shared is information that was passed on from generation to generation and that 
this creature was looked upon as a turning point and a change in every aspect. We learned during the reading of the buffalo calf, the white buffalo calf woman, that she, at the very end, it was supposed to be a prophecy of things to come. It was a correlation between all races, and it was a laying of a foundation of when those changes would be marked and signified. And it was the coming of the white buffalo. We have seen, as I stated from the Wikipedia article, there have been many times when a white buffalo was born. And we've also seen cases where they died a natural death. And we've seen cases where they were actually slaughtered. I believe the, the most important thing to take away from this is it may not be so much what we ourselves believe. We may have different views. We may have different thoughts as to what these myths and legends are. But when it comes right down to it, these people held these as sacred. Much as we do with a lot of the stories, for lack of a better term, that we pass on from family to family, from generation to generation, religious or not spiritual or not. There are things that we are taught, things that we are told as a marker, a benchmark for what we should be doing, where we expect to be, and what is believed to be. And by following that line, there's a lot to be learned from the past, and there's a lot to be hopeful for in the future. I know I'm probably sounding like some rambling fool at this point, but I find that the more I get involved with past history, whether it be factual history or a legend or a myth, the base matter is we're trying to make sense of the world around us. We've been doing it for thousands of years. I know for me personally, and mind you, this is just my opinion, for me to turn my nose up at something or look down on somebody for what they believe, I'm really doing a disservice not only to them, but to myself. Because these people held these stories and they passed them on as a way of teaching and a way of letting people know where they stood within their own tribes, within their own groups, within their own, within their own families. And to hear that when one of these buffaloes is born, the Native Americans pushed aside the fact that this belongs to one particular tribe. In the last story I read, uh, Little Soldier, whether, it is, whether we believe it was killed or whether it, was, it died of natural causes, he did state at one point that this animal was not just born for the Lakotas. It was born for all tribes and all people. And that's something really important to take away from it because it's a matter of perspective. What we find important, we want everybody to find important because it's important to us. And there's a little kernel of of wisdom, I think, in that. The fact that we find something so important and we want to be passionate about something, we want other people to learn about. And that's what pushes knowledge and that's what pushes belief in ourselves. Just that little, little bit further that makes me personally want to believe that there's more to life than just checks and balances. This is Lowell Matthias from The Spark. Where 
Drop the kids off and go party gets me mad So I pray, pray for peace to pray for change Keep on praying when everything stays the same And I pray for the pastors and all of the churches And those who cry night song following hearses I pray for you, pray for the sick and the poor Pray for the rich man who don't give to the Lord And I pray for wisdom and I pray for power And I pray for be ready in the final hour And I pray for those who keep judging ministry And I pray for my friends and my enemies Somebody help me up. Uh, who?